Okay, some more exercises in 3.2, uh, section 3.2, some more homework exercises, I should say. And number 40, this was just true and false. And it says if f has a derivative at x equals a, then f is continuous at x equals a. Justify your, your answer. Well, just look at theorem 1 on page 113. Remember, we talked about this differentiability implies continuity, so that was true. So we just add theorem 1. Uh, number 41. Number 41 says, if f is continuous at x equals a, then f has a derivative at x equals a. Justify your answer. Well, this is false. In order to prove any statement false, you just have to state a counterexample. And what's our good counterexample? Absolute value of x. The absolute value of x at x equals 0, that's where we have a corner. That's continuous, but not differentiable because of the corner. So that's a good counterexample. Number 42 um, which of the following is true about the graph of f of x equals x to the four-fifths at x equals zero? And it has a cusp. And we already did this problem, so you just have to see number 12 on page 114. We worked that out before, and we got a cusp, so that's right there. Okay, number 44 and 45 uh, just are, are dealing with this piecewise function, and they just want you to find <coughs> pardon me, the left-hand derivative and the right-hand derivative. Okay, so the left-hand derivative, that's equal to the limit as h approaches 0, the whole thing. We've done our left-hand derivatives. Minus 8 over h. Okay, and that's going to be f of 0 plus h, because this is at 0. So my a will be 0, uh, minus f of 0 over h. And I remember this is going to be to the left of of zero, if h approaches zero from the negative direction, this will be less than zero. Should put zero there. What am I doing? Less than zero. Pardon me. Less than zero, and this will be equal to zero. Okay. So if it's less than zero, I'm going to be using this function. If it's equal to the zero, I'm using the same function. So it's going to be this. So 2 times x, that's our 2x, I should show you that up there, there we go. So 2x plus 1 for both less than and equal to 0, so 2x plus 1. So 2, 0 plus h plus 1 minus 2 times 0 plus 1, that's a 0. And this ends up being just 2h plus 1 minus 1, which is just 2h over h, the h is canceled, so the limit as h approaches 0 from the negative direction of 2 is just 2. So that was easy. So that would be letter B. That's what they had. And they also wanted to find the right hand. Uh, number 45 was to find the right hand derivative. So it was just basically one problem in two parts. And again, we're using this function. So if we look at the right hand derivative, all right, again, we use our same derivative formula. And then we're going to put 0 in. But as h approaches 0 from the positive direction, this will be greater than 0. And this will be equal to 0. So greater than 0, I'm using this one now. So that's going to be 0. That's going to be x squared plus 1. But the x is going to be 0 plus h. So 0 plus h squared plus 1. Minus, but then equal to 0, I'm using this one. So that's going to be the 2x plus 1 or 2 times 0 plus 1. But if I simplify this, this is going to be just h squared plus 1 minus, and then 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is just 1, so minus 1. Those cancel, so I have h squared over h, but one of those cancel. I don't have to worry, about, or it becomes 1, h over h, which is 1. So I just have the limit as h approaches 0 of h, which is 0. So that was letter C. So that was your right-hand derivative, okay? Hope that makes sense.